Guide on how to write a risk for bleeding nursing diagnosis. Writing a nursing diagnosis for the risk of bleeding involves careful assessment and documentation of a patient's condition, potential risk factors, and the patient's specific situation. Here's a guide to help you formulate a comprehensive risk for bleeding nursing diagnosis. Step 1. Gather patient information. Collect relevant patient information, including medical history, current medications, recent surgeries, and any underlying medical conditions that could predispose the patient to bleeding. Step 2. Identify risk factors. Consider factors that increase the patient's risk of bleeding, such as anticoagulant medications, thrombocytopenia, low platelet count, history of bleeding disorders, recent surgical procedures, advanced age, and chronic medical conditions like liver disease or renal dysfunction. Step 3. Use NANDAI terminology. The North American Nursing Diagnosis Association International NANDAI, provides standardized nursing diagnoses. For the risk of bleeding, the appropriate diagnosis would be risk for bleeding. Step 4. Write the nursing diagnosis statement. The nursing diagnosis statement should follow the NANDAI format, risk for bleeding related to risk factors as evidenced by supporting cues or evidence. Step 5. Include specific risk factors. Mention the specific risk factors that contribute to the patient's risk of bleeding. For example, risk for bleeding related to anticoagulant therapy, thrombocytopenia, and recent surgery as evidenced by low platelet count prolonged clotting times, and surgical incision. Step 6. Document supporting evidence. List objective data that supports the diagnosis, such as laboratory values, INR, PT, PTT, platelet count, signs of bleeding, patechi, ecchymosis, oozing from wounds, and patient history for medication use, recent procedures. Step 7. Consider contributing factors. Identify any factors that might exacerbate the risk, such as falls, immobility, and invasive procedures. These factors can further increase the likelihood of bleeding. Step 8. Individualize the diagnosis. Tailor the diagnosis to the specific patient. Consider their age, medical history, and unique circumstances. For instance, an older adult with a history of liver disease might have a different risk profile compared to a younger patient on anticoagulation therapy. Step 9. Develop nursing interventions. Once the risk for bleeding has been identified, outline nursing interventions to mitigate the risk. These might include 1. Monitoring laboratory values, INR, PT, PTT, platelet count, dot, 2. Administering medications as prescribed, antidotes, platelet transfusions, dot, 3. Implementing fall prevention strategies, 4. Educating the patient about bleeding precautions and signs of bleeding, 5. Avoiding invasive procedures when possible. Step 10. Set goals and outcomes. Define measurable goals related to reducing the risk of bleeding. These goals should be achievable and time-bound. For example, patient's INR will be within therapeutic range within three days. Step 11. Document and evaluate. Continuously document the patient's response to interventions and monitor for changes in bleeding risk. Adjust interventions as needed and evaluate the effectiveness of your care. For personalized risk for bleeding nursing diagnosis visit Homework Market.